Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we have seen the high level architecture of a text to SQL agent. I have also told that we will be covering uh, this complete project in two videos. But what I felt is uh, you can't put everything in two videos. It will be slightly lengthy. It will be slightly confusing as well. So that is the reason I thought it to uh, I thought to broke it into multiple videos so that everyone can consume slowly uh, part by part. Right. So in this video, what we do is we do a code walkthrough on how to build uh, a knowledge base and also router agent. Right. In the subsequent videos, uh, we'll be looking at the code walkthroughs of other agents as well. So now uh, with this understanding, let's start. So as already discussed in the last video, knowledge base is something that powers our agentic workflow. Let's do a quick recap. What is knowledge base? How do we build it? So given a one line description of a specific table, uh, which is manually given by us, along with that, uh, a, a random three or four rows from that specific table, if you combine both of them and give it to the LLM, LLM will generate a table description. It will also generate column description for every column along with the sample values in that column. So now uh, for a particular table, the table description in the knowledge base will look something like this. So this description is in the form of list of lists where the zeroth index has the table description that is generated by the LLM. From first index, it has the column description. If you see, customer ID is a unique identifier for each customer. So the data type is string and sample values look something like this, right? So this is how our uh, table descriptions are stored in knowledge base for every table. Let's quickly see how do we build a knowledge base. So now the code is there in knowledge base.ipynb. So here we are uh, importing bunch of libraries over here. Uh, let me minimize this terminal. Yes. So now here in the table description dictionary, for every table, I have a corresponding one or two line description that is manually written by me. So now here uh, we have a read underscore SQL function that takes table name as input. We are doing a simple select star from the table. We are extracting random five rows from that specific table. And we are uh, converting the data into pandas data frame and we are returning a pandas data frame from this function. So now I'm defining a chat prompt template over here. So here, here is how I prompt my LLM. So now this chat prompt template takes two variables as input. The one variable is the table description. Another variable is the random uh, five rows that we have uh, extracted from this function. So this is how I've defined my chat prompt template. Uh, I'll put the, uh, the code repository in GitHub. You can just go through the prompts. So now I've defined a simple chain over here. So now here I'm using a simple for loop to loop my table description dictionary for every key comma value that is for every table and corresponding description. I'm sending my table to read underscore SQL so that it will extract a random five rows from the SQL table. I'm converting that data frame into dictionary format and then into a string format so that I can give as an input to the chain, right? So I'm just simply saying chain dot invoke description is nothing but table description uh, that we have written manually and I'm giving sample random five rows from this specific table. So now LLM will give some response. We are storing that response in response variable and we are storing this in a dictionary which is called as KB underscore final, right? We have initialized KB underscore final dictionary. This dictionary has a key which is a table name and, and the value of this dictionary is nothing but the output generated by the LLM. So now likewise, we loop through every table and corresponding description. We store the output generated by the LLM into KB underscore final. So now this is how uh, the output for every table looks like, which we've already seen in our Miro board. So now once we generate description for every table, uh, we push KB underscore final dictionary into a pickle file, which is called KB.pickle. We will be using this pickle file uh, while uh, building different nodes of our agentic workflow. So this is how we build our knowledge base. So now let's go to our uh, main file where we build our actual agentic workflow. So now we are importing few libraries over here. 
So now I'm loading my knowledge base. I'm loading my knowledge base and storing the knowledge base in load underscore dictionary variable. Uh, so now to build any Langraph application, there are three most important components, right? So now let's quickly, uh, let's walk through, I'll walk you through the terminologies of Langraph, right? So the every, every square and rectangle that you see in this figure are called as nodes. Right. So uh, different nodes are connected by these lines. We call these lines as edges. So inside each of these nodes, we use lots of variables. So we will need to declare all these variables that are used by different nodes inside something called as state of the graph. Right. State is uh, where we define all our variables that are used by our nodes. Right. Uh, so now there are lots of other components in Lang graph, but we don't care about all this, all those components. We'll be using these three main components only for our text to SQL agent. So now with this understanding, let's start declaring our state. So now this is how we declare our state of the graph, which holds all the variables that we use in inside different nodes of our Lang graph application. So a user query is something, uh, it stores the question asked by the user. I'll walk you through uh, the different variables that we use over here as we progress. So now soon after a user asks a question, the question is routed to a, a router node, right? We, we will call it as router node from now, right? So now how do we do that? So now we define a node, something like this. So uh, it's node is nothing but a simple Python function. Inside this router node, uh, we are calling user question. State of user query is nothing but our user question. We are storing that in Q variable and we are giving that user question to agent underscore to function. So this agent underscore to function, I'm calling from this router agent. So this is our agent underscore to function. What is there within here? Uh, we are just having a chain inside this function. So what is this chain? Uh, it, it's a pretty simple chain. So now let's quickly look at the prompt related to this chain, right? Here, the major idea is I'm just giving some description for each of our agents. We have three agents right now, right? Customer agent, orders agent, product agent. I'm giving a simple one line description for each of these agents. I'm giving a simple chain of thought prompting over here where I'm prompting my LLM to think in this way. I'm saying that given these uh, agent descriptions and given the user question, think that this user, this user question can be solved by which of the agents. If you think the user question can be solved by customer agent and orders agent, give me something like this as output. If you think like uh, the user question can only be solved by just customer agent, give list of customer as output, right? This is what happens over here. So this chain gives output in the form of list of strings, right? So if it thinks like, two agents like customer agent and product agent can answer a user question. The output will be something like customer uh, comma product, right? So that is there within this agent underscore two function. Let's go to our main. So now we are giving a user question to the specific agent. The output of the agent will look something like this, right? It will be in the form of list of string. Uh, it can be something like customer and orders. Right. Or it can be like customer comma orders comma product. Or it can be anything. So now I'm storing, I'm storing this value. I'm storing this value uh, in something called as router underscore out, right? Where I have declared this, I have declared router underscore out over here. Right. So output of every node should be in the form of dictionary. Right. Uh, great. So now this is how we define a node in a land graph application. So now we need to add this node to the graph. How do we do that? Uh, we do it over here. So now uh, we declare a state graph. We define a state graph and assign that to builder underscore final. Uh, we use builder underscore final to add nodes. So this is how we add a node builder underscore final dot add node. Uh, we are just giving router function and we are calling it as router, right? So once we add a node to the graph, we also need to add an edge, right? We have, we have added a node to the graph. We need to add this edge uh, between start to router node, right? Where do we do that? We do it over here. 
I just simply say builder underscore final dot add underscore edge. I'm adding an edge from start to router. So what, whenever user asks a question, that's a starting point. And from that, I'm routing that question directly to my router node, right? So this is how I declare my node. This is how I add an edge, right? Uh, so now, once router agent or router node gives output, right? I need to route the uh, output dynamically to different nodes, right? If uh, router node gives output as customer and product as output, I need to dynamically route my user question to this customer node and the product node. I shouldn't route my agent or shouldn't route my user question to my orders node, right? How do we induce that? We induce that using something called as conditional edges, right? So before getting into conditional edges, because uh, we can route our user question to any of these three nodes, we need to declare the three nodes, right? So where do we declare the three nodes? Like we have declared our router node. We also declare our customer node. We declare our orders node. We declare our project product node. Right. What is there within each of these nodes? Uh, we will see in next video. For now, just think like uh, we have some logic within these nodes. Right. So now the next part is how do we dynamically route a user question to these different nodes? So now for that, we use a function called as route underscore request. What this route underscore request does is it will just read from this variable. Right. It's just reading routes equal to state of router underscore out. Right, it is nothing but the list of strings, list of uh, agents. That's it. So I'm just returning those routes. So now what I say over here is builder underscore final. So I have already created an edge from starter start to router. So now I wanted to add a conditional edge from router to any of these three nodes. Right, I've already declared these uh, nodes uh, in the top. I wanted to add an edge from router to any of these three nodes based on this logic or based on this function. If this function gives output as customer and order, right? So I'll, I'll create an edge from my router node to customer node and order node. If my route request said like uh, it is customer agent, order agent and product agent, right? Then I'll add edges from router node to customer agent orders, sorry, agent or and, and uh, product node, right? Sorry, I'll be using the term agents and node, uh, right? Uh, for same meaning, right? I'll be using them interchangeably. So don't get confused. So now based on this router and under, route underscore request function, I'll be dynamically adding edges between a uh, router and each of these three nodes, right? So this is how. Uh, we include such kind of uh, dynamic edges using the add conditional edges uh, function, right? Yeah, I think uh, pretty much that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll try to understand what is there within each of uh, the customer node, orders node and product node, right? If you just carefully see, uh, we are calling the same graph. We are calling something like graph final within each of these nodes, right? So uh, what is there over here? Let's see in the next video. Uh, great then, see you in the next video. Bye.